ran the one block. They call me the green one. Yo, yo, yo. As you'll soon find out, I'm the guy who keeps things running around here. I keep the music going. Actually, I keep the whole place rocking and rolling. So how about we go do some math? It's a lot of fun using the blocks. I don't know. I'm one of them. I'm the green block. So let's start having some fun with Division by Ben Rogers. This brings us to the next concept in mathematics, or the next uh, area of mathematics that children usually despise. And here's the thing, is that many people find, or we've done many studies, where we teach multiplication so late in the education system that the brain of the child is past the repetition point and the multiplication becomes tedious and hard and we start losing children right there. And if we haven't lost them there, we then lose them in this thing called long division. Many children decide that they don't like math after they have to do long division. And it's a compounding problem because part of the problem there is that they haven't got the multiplication down, so of course the division becomes more difficult. But let's make division and the concept of division using a rectangle and counting and counting things that are same very simple, where we can introduce it to even very young children who are maybe just four or five years old. Let's tell a story about Boy Scouts. I'm from Hawaii, so we talk about pineapples in our Boy Scout story. Uh, Twelve Boy Scouts go out and pick some pineapple. And they pick 132 pineapples. And at the end of the day, the farmer says to them, well, gee, you picked 132 of these. Why don't you just take them and uh, divide them up equally among yourselves and take them home. So how many would be the question does each Boy Scout get? If they have 12 Boy Scouts, or if we have 12 Boy Scouts, they pick 132 pineapple, how many does each Boy Scout get? Here's the simple problem. Now, let's illustrate this using Mortensen math. And again, we would use a three-period lesson to develop these concepts. This is 100. These are tens. And you know, when we're adding tens together, one ten, two tens, three tens, three tens want seven tens to become 100, and so forth. Nine tens needs one ten to become 100, and the concept is the same as when we were doing addition with single units with tens. Hundreds, tens, and some units. And here we have 100 and 32 pineapple. Now, our problem said, and I'll put this problem up here, that we had 12 Boy Scouts. And you could even get blocks out, and for expediency's sake, I'm not going to do that, but you could get blocks out, and now these are just Boy Scouts. And you could put them up here, or on your table, or wherever you're working, and line up 12 Boy Scouts. And you know, this could be tall Boy Scout, another one, and then we could have some Boy Scouts here that showed up in uniform, and you line them up here, and you say, well, let's see, if I was going to pass out my pineapple to each Boy Scout, could I pass them out one at a time? One, one, but, oh, that would take forever, wouldn't it? Because we'd have to start breaking up the tens. Oh, I could pass them out ten at a time, ten, ten, uh, but that would take forever, too. So here's what I'm going to do. If I have my 12 Boy Scouts, you have to use your imagination that they're lined up here waiting for their pineapples. Could I just pass out my pineapple like this? And I've passed out now. Each one gets 10. Everybody has 10. Now, I'm not done, but can you see that I've passed out 102 tens? Passed out 120. And if I'm a little child, I can see that I've passed out one hundred and two tens, and I have some left. Am I done passing out my pineapple? Well, I have, how many here? Oops. I have twelve. I have twelve left. All right, so I pass them out like this, and I'm done. I have each Boy Scout receiving eleven. You see that right here? This Boy Scout would get eleven. This Boy Scout over here would get eleven. Everyone would get eleven. So if I have 
a rectangle, which is what I have here, with 132 pineapples in it, or 132, and I pass them out to my 12 Boy Scouts, each one gets 11. And another way to look at this is that if one side of this rectangle is 12, the other side is 11. And it really is that simple. And see, most people don't realize that this symbol right here is shorthand for rectangle. Now, if you put this in class or on your paper and you just put 11 there and you don't show your work, you may be penalized for this if you just knew in your mind that you could put it together like that. So, we need to be able to show our work. So what do we do first? Well first, and this is just the concept of it, we do this. We count the 120. And we see as we're going along this side, and we could use the example of Hiram the ant up on his little stepladder, and he sees that when he goes by here, he's not just counting the edge anymore, he's not just counting the 10 and the 1, he's counting everything that he sees here. He goes by 120. Now, what's left? Well, we look down here and we can see that there was 12 left. I said we hadn't passed out all of our pineapples and there's still 12 left. So we pass out the other 12 pineapples, or these 12 pineapples, and there's none left to pass out. And you can see that this mirrors the notation. In fact, this is where the notation came from. Now, many students will say, well, 12 goes into 13 once, and they don't even put a zero here, because they don't understand the concept that we've actually counted 120, and that it's 10 times 12. And they just use an algorithm with no understanding of what they're doing. So later on, when they get to the quote-unquote higher mathematics, they're confused, and this is hard. And this is just one example like I said, because we are pressed for time, one hour to present all these concepts in mathematics. But can you see, we use the rectangle to facilitate counting. Simple as that. And when we counted, we never even got off this hand to solve this problem. How high did we have to count to? We counted a one. We counted one of these blue ones and one of these green ones. We never got even close to nine. We only count things that are same. We couldn't call this two because this is a big blue one and this is a green one and they don't look same at all. So I have to mark them as one of those and one of those. We only count things that are same. And we didn't even use zero or one to solve this problem. So those first three concepts, mathematics is a study of numbers and all we're doing is counting. The highest number we count to is nine. We only count things that are same and we form a rectangle to facilitate counting. It's all we need to do this division. Now, we're gonna change things, but it's gonna be the same. <laughs> we're gonna change things by changing the base. This is base 10, now we move into base X. Yo, yo, yo! Remember, everyone wants to be a 10. We'll have more fun with Simple Addition. Ben taught us how easy it is finding for X making it so simple and fun. Now get ready for more fun with Simple Edition with Chip and Renee. Yay! Uh, the, the plus sign, it's a addition. Okay, so um, you want what, what kind of numbers you want to put together now? Um, hey, you know what I found? And what'd you find? I found a two. And you know I got a two. Well, what if we put my two together with your two? Well, let's find out. Let's see what happens. I'll get my two and you get your two, okay? Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got my two right here. I got my two right here. Okay, I'll put, let's put them right there. Okay. And let's see, one, two. One, two. So there's one, two. There's my two. Okay, now what? Well, all you gotta do is uh, put them together. Right? Because that's what that says. That says, point the numbers together. Just push them together. And just like we pushed the other numbers together. Okay, let's try it. I gotta get my end lifted up here. Okay. You gonna put yours up? Here, put, put it up. There, there you go. Alright, we got it together. You know, we should, we should, we should, we should start a moving company. <laughs> okay, let's see. 
How is that? I got it? All right, very good. Okay, so now we stuck them together and we can count. Yep, we can count. One, two, three, four. Very good. <laughs> wow, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, look at that. So it is. It's, if we get a two and another two together, it turns into a four. Wow. So two and two, one, two, three, four. Wow. So see that symbol right there? All that means is push them together. As simple as that, right? We're just, it's addition, but it just means push them together, okay? Whatever's over there, you push together with what's over there, and then you get that, see? So there, now we can see two plus two is the same thing as four, right? Right, is that what that means? Yep, that's exactly what that means, just what we did. You had, you had a two, and I had a two, and when we put them together, we got four. Wow, that's pretty neat. Okay, you know what, we could, we could do some more. Yeah, let's do some more. In fact, now that we have some fours, maybe um, we could put two fours together a little later or something. Yeah, we can do all kinds of numbers. We can do whatever we want. That's right, boys and girls. You can do whatever you want at home. You can take your block, put whatever numbers you want to put on and have lots of fun while you're doing it. Okay. All right, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye. I am the unit one, a.k.a. the green one. Yeah, I am the green one, but everyone wants to be a 10. But with the help of my posse here behind me, block 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, anyone can be a 10, and even more. So... It's good for everyone to want to be a 10, but I can make it so much more. And I'm a song and dance man that loves to get down with math, so I can make math a lot more fun. So coming up next, Ben Rogers, Finding for X. And if anyone can find for X, it's Ben Rogers. So I give you now... Ben Rogers. We want straight A's. Ben's got it going on. Ben explains it all. I know. I used to be a moron. But then I listened to Ben and I learned math. And now I'm just kind of a moron. But now I get straight A's. Straight A's. Once again, when we're doing the Mortensen Mathematics in a classroom situation or tutoring with students, we spend a lot longer time developing these concepts. However, briefly, what I have here is a 10. And we can see here that on this side, we know how many it is. It's 10. Well, if I turn it on this side, it's smooth. We don't have the lines to let us know that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It could be anything. And using our imagination, this could be less than one, it could be about three or four, we don't know how many it is. Always changing, always varying, in a mathematics we call this a variable. And what are we going to name our variable? Well, we name our variable x. And any child can make an x. Alright, now, this is an x. If I have an x and another x, I now have two x. Very simple to see. If I have x and Johnny has x, he has an x, I have an x, we put our x's together, we get two x. Using the blocks, this is so visually obvious, it's redundant. Because what I have is two here and two here. Using the symbols, we just put a 2 in front of the x to tell us how many there are. Now, if I change my problem just slightly and add an x here, we can see that I have 2x and another x, and I just add one more x, and of course I have how many? Well, 3x. 
We're just counting the same kind. Really easy. 2x and another x, 3x. Now, this is also an x. And once again, for the sake of time, what shape is this? Well, it's a square. So let's call this x squared. Simple. x squared. How do we write that? And if you tell a child it's x squared, it's the same thing as telling them this is a table, this is a chair. They don't question. Older students and adults and teachers, well, why is that an x squared? Well, it's x this way and it's x this way. And the way we write that is it's x two ways, x squared. Now, these are x's. And you can train the child very simply to saying x. We even have, even though it's plural and they want to say x's, it's still just 3x. They hear you say 3x, they'll say 3x. Now, I have x square x's, or x. I have three of them, 3x and some units, and that's just two. So here's x squared, 3x, and two. And we could use a three period lesson to develop this concept so that we know what all the names of the blocks are when we have them on the smooth side. Because when we flip it over, this is 100. But on the smooth side, this is x squared. Now, what I'm gonna do is once again, make a rectangle with x squared, 3x, and 2. And further, I'm going to give you even more information. I'm going to tell you what one of the sides are. Last time, I gave you lots of information. I told you what the rectangle was, and I told you one side. But what if we do this thing called factoring, where I'll only give you the rectangle, and I don't tell you what the sides are. I don't give you any more information than that. Just factor this. Well, factoring means form a rectangle and count the sides. So same thing, x squared, 3x, and we're going to pattern it just slightly differently, where the units wind up here on top. Same rectangle, just moved it here. Now, can we describe this rectangle? Can we see that this is x plus 2 across? and it's x plus 1 up, factored. Now, just like 18, when I had my 18, we don't count, we don't count this as 2x plus 2, or try to count in here. We just count the edges. When I had 18 and I was counting with my multiplication, I said, well, this side is 3 and that side is 6. I didn't try to count the inside. We just counted the edge. But if you're careful and you look at this, I know the dimensions of this are x plus 2. And if you look carefully, you can see that this is x plus 2. In fact, anywhere along this, it's x plus 2. And anywhere along this this way, it's x plus 1. Now, too easy, I know. It can't be that simple. Really, it is. And by the way, when you get that SAT or GMAT or GED test or whatever alphabet soup they give you, ACT, it doesn't say you can't draw boxes, lines, and dots. It says, here's three white sheets of paper. Good luck. And I know for a fact that this is very, very effective because I've had students come up to me and tell me that, you know, you came and did a demonstration in our classroom and I was failing. I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't getting them. And then I remembered I could go back and draw them. And I went back and drew them and I got an A because I drew every single one of them correctly and then all I had to do was make the symbols. Now, which brings us to the next step. Where can my children take these blocks to school with them? No, probably not. But then again, yes they can because where will they take the blocks?
Let's do a bigger problem because bigger is funner. Still x squared, but let's take 4x and 3. So let's see, I need to make sure I have the right pieces. I don't have x squared here. I have 3x, so I need another x. And for little kids, and I mean very little kids, who can easily do these problems, and it's fun, I'm just making puzzles, they have to think, well, let's see, I need another x, and I need another unit, and there's a lot of learning that takes place there. All right, so I'm just going to factor this very quickly. And either way, you could do it. Put one on the side, rest on top. There's a little algorithm for you. Just put one on the side, rest on top. And once again, I have a rectangle, which means I've factored it. And again, I discount. Let's see, well, across here, I have x plus 1. And up, what do I have? Can you see it? I have x plus 3. No FOIL, no distributive theory of multiplication, just introducing the basic concept of factoring. And later on, we can say that the x times x is x squared, and then we have 3x and another x and 1 times. But for right now, just understanding what are we doing? We're making rectangles, and we're counting the sides. Super easy and fun. Let's do another one. x squared, 5x, and 6. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. x squared, 5x, and 6. I'm going to make a rectangle, and I've got to count the sides. Well, let's see here. I have now 4x here and 3, so let's see. Once again, if I'm a small child, I need to make sure I've got the right pieces out. And I have, uh, let's see here. I have an x squared. I had a 10 slip in there. One, two, three, four, five, I needed two more. And six, well, now I need... Okay, now I've got all my pieces together. Now, hmm. If I put one on the side and the rest on top, I'm going to find that I won't be able to fit all my pieces in. Hmm. I can only fit four in there. And we'll start learning about factoring and how numbers factor also. How about that? And now we can see, I've built a rectangle, and I had to make a space for these to fit in there. And my space needed to be 2 by 3. See, all the numbers tell you about how to, and I'm not going to tell you any rules or any algorithms. The children will figure these things out. The student will start figuring these things out. Ah, that means I have to break up my 5 into a certain way so that I can fit my 6 in there. 2 and 3 is 5, and we'll leave it at that. That needs a space for the green ones to fit in there, is what the little kids say. And now I can count. It's x plus 2 this way. And if I count up, they're the same. What I'm saying is x squared plus 5x plus 6 is the same thing as x plus 2 taken x plus 3 times. Is that difficult? And of course we're staying positive for the purposes of this short video. And now the next question becomes, well, what if I want to find out what x is? Because basically we're just man manipulating these uh, expressions, this quadratic, into these two binomials multiplied by each other. So what if I want to know what x is? Well, let's tell a story, and we'll uh, discover what x is. OK, what I've built here, or what I've drawn here, using symbols, is x squared, 3x, and 2 is inside of our rectangle. And one side of the rectangle is x plus 2. Can you tell me what the other side is? Well, let's build it. This should look very familiar from the Boy Scout story that we told just a moment ago. Can we see here that this side is x plus 2? Couldn't call it 3 because this is an x. And these are two units. Well, the other side, then, is x plus 1. It's visually obvious that if the whole rectangle is x squared, 3x, and 2, the other side must be x plus 1. Must be. It can be nothing else. 
And suddenly this polynomial division is a breeze. Any child can do this. Once again, how high did we have to count? We counted one x and one unit to solve it. We had to count all the way to three, one, two, three, because we had to count all the blue ones. Never got off this hand. It's that easy. Really it is. Now, we could spend much more time with explanation on why this works and how it mirrors the symbols. But I think you can see that any young child can do this. Ben Rogers has got it going on. Ben Rogers explains it all with Morton's and Matt. If you want straight A's, Ben's got it going on. Ben explains it all. I know. I used to be a moron. But then I listened to Ben. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven. Then we come back. Oh, hi. You're not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for Stover. By the way, I'm Rover. I count by threes, and I'm trying to find my friend Stover. He's a cat. So we can count by threes. If you see him, let me know. Let's count. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and try to count. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Then we count them back. Oh, hi, Stover. You want to keep counting with me? Let's do it. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Good. Let's keep going. I'm a guy and I am green. I might look small, but I'm the one they call who makes the scene. Everything is made of me. If there's no one, no one else would be. So when it's time for math, I'm the one they call. I make them, and they're all small and made of me. So when the green guy gets down, everyone else becomes a clown. So if you blocks cooperate, the math is counting, because I work great. Algebra, trig, math, problem solving. I do the work while you all are dissolving. Hey, where's... Hey, where are you going? Hey, hey where, where's everybody going? I'm not done yet. Hey, I'm still rapping. Hey, hey, come back here. Hey, hey I'm still rapping. What's going on? <laughs>